Donna. I just wanted to talk to you today about trauma. Um, I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, but I'm super introvert, and so this is kind of hard for me, but I do feel like it could super, it could help anyone, you know? Um, it's what I've gone through in the last five years of do, uh, inner healing on myself and um, other people. So anyways, uh, trauma. Say you, uh, I always use this example. You're driving on the road, right? And you have this uh, five-year-old girl or a five-year-old boy. Well, let's use a five-year-old girl. So you're driving down the road, she's with her family, she's in a car, and all of a sudden, you're going over a bridge, right? And then the bridge, the, the car goes off the bridge, right? It turns out that everything's fine, but for those 10 minutes, they're in the water, your family's screaming, the little girl who's five, hears her mom say, oh my gosh, we're gonna die, you know, it's like super traumatic. So you have this traumatic incident, right? The police come, whatever, whatever they use to get people out, and um, everyone's fine, but it left a mark on this five-year-old little girl, right? So at that moment, she had this little girl part of her that was in trauma get stuck in time. And when she turns six, seven, eight, ten, she's afraid of bridges, you know? And um, literally she turns 14, 15, she gets her license and she doesn't drive over bridges. So she gets older, 20, 30, she knows, she's a 30 year old now, she knows in her, um, you know, her left side logical brain, she's like, I'm fine, I'm driving over a bridge, it is fine, nothing's gonna happen, that was a one in a lifetime thing, but she still has this emotional part, a physical part of her body that, you know, her heart rate goes up when she drives over a bridge or someone else does, her um, anxiety comes, fear, she's triggered, and um, even though she knows, I'm 30, I should be fine going over a bridge, right? And so what happens is that this little girl part gets stuck in time, in that emotion, and then it creates this um, protective mechanism that you put around yourself. I'll just stay away from bridges. I'm just gonna stay away from, I'm not gonna be in cars, or I'm not gonna go over a bridge, or I just won't drive over a bridge. And so it, it creates this kind of schism in the body where, um, you know, you're 40 now, like I'm almost 50. You know, I was living my life, I didn't actually have the bridge incident in my own inner healing, um, but I've had plenty of others. But you get to the point where you're like, I'm, I'm almost 50, I should be able to go over a bridge. But when you have this little girl part stuck in trauma, stuck in pain, stuck in this emotion, and then you have all these protective parts of you, like protective mechanisms saying, don't do this, don't go over the bridge because we don't want to trigger this little girl part, right? It's no way to live. Like I lived like that. I lived like that forever. You know, I was stuck in a chair basically for three years of my life and, um, it was the worst and I got to the point where I couldn't function and um, and so uh, this process so I've had some inner healing process done and I've actually written a book um, it's not printed yet I mean it's written I just have to like do whatever you do to like make it a Kindle or whatever downloadable book but anyways um, and plus my my husband and I've done uh, we do inner healing counseling with people, but more like teaching. The book is actually going to be teach it how to do it yourself because seriously, I can't duplicate it myself. And even though we've done, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients, uh, I just, I want writing a book, how to do it. And it's really, it's gentle. It's all about inner healing. It's about um, the lies we believe, you know? So like with that part, that little girl part, she believed this lie, right? That bridges aren't safe believed another lie cars aren't saved or you're gonna fall off this bridge if something happens right and so um, and so those are lies those lies were needed to those that was actually needed as a child you know to keep yourself safe and it could be anything like with me I had this problem with uh, washing my hands and so I really just like a few months ago I realized it and I was more like an annoying it wasn't like I didn't realize it was seriously deep from trauma I was just like why am I literally washing my hands all the time and more I think it was probably like more for I you know I noticed my hands were all wrinkly compared to my face and I'm like why are they all wrinkly compared to my face and I realized oh my gosh you're washing your hands all the time and so um, anyways my husband and I did this uh, 
we were in the car, we were actually heading to Walmart and he said something, he was like, cause I was like, it's not okay to be sticky. Cause literally the second I get something on my hands, I'm like, um, oh my gosh, get this off my hands. I can't stand that feeling. It's like an emotion comes up and it actually physically feels like ill. And I didn't know why, like I was feeling that way. And so he, I was like, it's not okay to be sticky. And he was like, it's okay to be sticky. And right away, it was like that emotion, not okay. So we pull, actually pulled over the car and I was like, why? Why is it not okay to be sticky? You actually, so for me with the process, it's about, um, it's about going inside and in, internal, internalizing that it is, um, why? Why is it not okay to be sticky, you know? And for me and my issue actually, in the car, I had this flashback of uh, my mom scrubbing my hands with SOS pads and Comet Cleanser when I was sticky. And it's funny because that's something I knew all my life. Yeah, my mom did that. She didn't like getting, I've got ink, anything on my hand, we'd be, there's the Comet Cleanser, the SOS pads, right? And I didn't think it affected me, but I, what I didn't realize is that I had this little girl part that it's pain, it was painful. And um, yeah, there was, my hands were scratched up after that. And um, it was pretty terrible, but it created that fear in me, that emotion, that little girl was only four or five, stuck in time that was still there. And what happened was um, anytime I got anything on my hands, this protective mechanism part, like a bubble around me was like, get it off your hands, get it off, wash your hands, wash your hands, get it off, get it off. Because trying to protect me, right? Which is great when you're five, because you need that protection. You need, to, I needed that from abuse. I needed that to make sure that I didn't get my hands sticky so nothing bad would happen, right? But I'm almost 50. 50 and I'm still having that and didn't even realize it was like this cycle was set in motion this vicious cycle that I didn't even realize that I was being true I knew like okay I'm washing my hands like every 10 minutes what the heck and here I am an artist right so it's like not cool if you're painting and you're get clay and paint on your hands and you feel like you need to wash your hands right so anyways in the car we pulled over we're going to Walmart and um my husband and I were just going through it and I was like okay what is the, what is, you know, I was thinking of that lie. Why is it not okay to be sticky? So I had the, my mom with the SOS pad and I immediately started crying. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is why. Oh my gosh, I've set up this protective mechanism this whole time, but I'm safe now. So it was a matter of asking the truth because the truth inside, whether it's the truth from God or the, whatever, the universe, I know God is like a trigger word for people, but the universe, whatever, is like the source of your truth. And um, that truth was, it's okay. You're okay. You don't, ha it's okay to be sticky now. Nothing bad's gonna happen to you now. You know, and so it was like, okay, nothing bad's gonna happen to me now. And so I just am like, I, uh, I had to choose to believe that truth. I stopped in, you know, in the car and I was just like, okay, I do, I believe that truth. I'm almost 50, nothing's bad gonna happen to me now. If my mom ever tried that, I'd feel like, you know, I could run away, drive away, punch her, whatever. I'm not stuck, I'm not five. You know, it just was like um, enlightening to realize that I'm safe now. And so once I believe that truth, once I believe that truth, and then I just said, you know, I renounce those lies. I refuse to believe the lie that it's not okay to be sticky. And I asked, I made the safe place. You know, we do this whole process. You create this safe place. And in my mind, I just sent that little girl part right to the safe place and that protective part right to the safe place and believe the truth, refuse to believe the lies and just ask for healing. I just asked, I asked for healing for that part of me so that I could move on, you know? And the cool thing is that I got home that night and I made spaghetti or lasagna or something. And I remember seeing sauce on my hands, like red sauce. And it was weird because it didn't feel, um, it didn't feel the same. I was like, my skin feels different because before I'd get sauce on my hand, like red sauce, and then you're like, oh, I gotta get this off. Like it was such a, it was even a physical thing. It wasn't painful, but it was just that, 
I gotta get that off my hands, you know? But it didn't feel that. It's like my skin sensations and my skin changed. And I'm like, seriously? I was five or four when that happened to me. And I literally set up a, you know, our, our internal system is so like, um, complex and I set up this process without even realizing it subconsciously you know this little girl who's in pain you set up this process to uh, protect yourself to protect yourself from that pain from that confusion and um, shows triggers so that you're never in a situation where that bad thing's gonna happen again right and so I did that I set up this vicious cycle and um, my whole life you know with this all this inner healing that I've gone through has been like that. All these vicious cycles, you know, I'm fine at the store and then all of a sudden I see us to see something or music comes on, I'm not fine, you know? And it's a matter of just finding your triggers and asking the truth, you know, what is the truth about those tr triggers? Because a lot of times you needed that setup so you, to save you from pain or whatever in the past, but you don't need it anymore. And it's a matter of believing the truth, asking for the truth on the inside and asking healing for those little girl parts or little boy parts that we have, you know? And um, anyways, it's cool. I'm like super psyched. I actually did, write, I wrote a book, but I mean, it's not, it's not published yet. I'm gonna publish it soon. Hopefully you just get it on a Kindle quickly or whatever, but the book is written and it's actually gonna be a how-to book, you know? Um, because I want other people to learn and I'm just one person and we've, even though we've done like hundreds and hundreds of clients, but I can't multiply myself. And uh, so I'm writing a book, how to do this on yourself, how to do it with your partner. It's gonna be step by step. And um, it's just pretty cool because I uh, hope this can help people. Um, just in general, I've had like quite a few experiences like this where, and I'm super, uh, I want to start sharing my story. I want to start sharing it like publicly because this is the way it is nowadays. It's pretty cool with, you know, it used to be for TV. You had, you watch TV and you were kind of put in front of you what you had to watch and that was it or you could change the channel. But now with YouTube, it's like the TV with technology, the TV can go to anyone in the world who wants to watch. And so I was thinking the other day, you know, if I had a microphone, if I, I actually woke up at two in the morning, I was like, if I had a microphone, and I had an hour and everyone was forced to listen or wanted to listen, what would I say? What would I say to everyone? And I was like, I would tell them. Actually, my first thought was I would tell them God's not mad at them. He's not mad. He's not mad at you. No, nope. he's absolutely not mad at you. He's happy with you. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you haven't done. He's so happy with you. So. That's what I tell them, but really the inner healing, it kind of ties hand in hand, but really I just, yeah, I want people healed. I mean, I, I hope this helps people. And um, anyways, I'm a super introvert and I never, as you know, I don't put myself out there, especially in video form, but I'm doing it and uh, just, you know, I'll have to deal with maybe negative comments. It's everywhere. I was thinking of disabling the comments, but my daughter's like, no, no, don't disable the comments. People need the comments, so we'll see about that. Anyways, peace, and uh, thank you for listening. And um, I'm not good at writing back, I'll try. But uh, hopefully I'll get the book out soon so that people can just uh, get all your questions answered. But thank you.